Welcome to this webinar, which provides insights on effective outdoor learning environments with a focus on early years practitioners. These insights take account of research as well as inspectors' findings in early learning and care settings and the advice provided by inspectors to promote improvement. All of the advice provided in this webinar should be considered in light of the prevailing public health guidelines which apply in educational settings. This webinar is rich in imagery which has been gathered from schools and early learning and care settings, in city and town centre settings where space may be limited, in rural settings and in settings that use nearby amenities on a regular basis. Let's first take some time to understand that the measurement for effectiveness of an outdoor learning environment is how it can support activity and for children activity is play. So when considering an environment, we can ask, what can the children do in the environment? How can they be active and become active agents? And what can they play? In this regard, it's important to remember that children up to the age of roughly four years are dependent on the environment to inspire ideas in which they can engage. This means that they need to see, hear, feel and perceive ideas from the environment so that they are stimulated to play and become active. This puts the onus on the adult to provide a wide range of age and developmentally appropriate and stimulating materials and resources. After the age of approximately four, the children often have ideas from previous experiences. These ideas may relate to yesterday's play or the children may want to act out something related to what they've seen or heard during the day. This means that the environment needs to be prepared so that it enables the children's ideas to be realised. This calls on the adults to generate effective environments and to adjust the environments based on their observations and the children's evolving abilities, interests, ideas and learning dispositions. The national frameworks, Shilta and Ashtar, which are reflected in the Early Years Education Inspection Framework encompass many criteria related to the outdoor environment. Taking account of these criteria in inspection reports, inspectors often refer to aesthetically pleasing, inviting and inspiring environments. In high quality settings, inspectors note that the environment is utilised as the third teacher, a term frequently used and referred to in the Reggio Emilia approach, considering that the parents are the first teachers and practitioners are the second teacher of the child. In these settings, natural features and elements have been conserved and the environment is used by the children to playfully engage and explore. Loose parts are provided so that children can realise their own play ideas. The environment is well maintained, purposely structured and organised. It helps to develop children's creativity, imagination and desire for exploration. In these settings, children of a range of ages and capabilities have easy access to materials and resources. These are developmentally appropriate and provide for multi-sensory learning experiences. The practitioners respond flexibly and follow and support children's interests and learning dispositions. They also provide materials and resources which are used effectively to stimulate, support, consolidate and extend children's learning and development. Children's physical fitness and development are enhanced by long periods of active play and the fun-filled use of whole body movement and action games. In high quality settings, all these approaches are utilised whether a setting has an outdoor area or not. Inspectors often note that in high quality settings, the weather rarely deters the adults and the children from spending time outside in the elements on a daily basis. This may be in their own outdoor space or using local facilities. Appropriate clothing is provided and everybody is prepared for the ever-changing Irish weather. On screen, you will see a quotation from an inspection report which highlights such strengths. 
let us now consider how effective outdoor environments can be created. Obviously, it is the adult in the setting who understand the type of environment that is available and the opportunities and restrictions of this environment. However, ideally the environment is co-created by the children and the adults. In highly effective settings, inspectors often note that children's voices are clearly central in the planning and design of their outdoor learning environments. This is positive, as they are going to be the end users. The physical structure and built elements of the environment may already be established. However, the adults can generate many opportunities for children to offer their suggestions about materials, activities and resources in light of their growing capabilities and evolving interests. We can ask children, what would you like to be able to do in the environment? Even the smallest children can show their preferences about their desired environment and its resources. They can do this by drawing or painting pictures, making salto models or creating collages from magazines and catalogues, thus communicating their ideas. Some children might have limited experience of different play spaces. For example, they might only be familiar with their local playground. Therefore, the adult's role is to broaden the children's horizon about the possibilities which a rich outdoor learning environment can offer. This can be done through discussions and by exploring books, magazines and pictures of natural play spaces. The next step in creating an effective learning environment is to realise the ideas which have been agreed with the children, insofar as is possible to put them into practice. As the children's interests and learning dispositions change continuously, the practitioners need to be highly observant and they need to change and adapt the play environment accordingly. Also, as you develop your environment, remember that parents, family members and community members are often very willing to help. To support you create and extend your outdoor learning environment, the self-evaluation audits within the learning environment pillar of the Astor Shield to Practice Guide and the audit provided in the Universal Design Guidelines publication are valuable tools. And remember, even the smallest addition, such as a big bowl of sand, earth or water, or bringing in seaweed in a bucket, will bring joy and excitement to the children and create hours of exploratory play. Let us now look at the broad variety of settings, including city and town centre locations, rural settings and settings that regularly use local amenities or settings that bring elements of nature inside. Many settings have an immediate outdoor area to which the children have daily access. In settings where excellent provision is noticed, these environments are suitably challenging and used effectively to develop children's fitness, encourage movement, develop and refine motor skills and provide positive sensory experiences. The children have choice and agency around their engagement with the environments, resources and activities. Similarly, inspectors may note that the natural outdoor environments are aesthetically pleasing and include a versatile and challenging landscape. Many settings have flat, safety surfaced areas of ground where the children can use wheelie toys, play hopscotch or use chalk on. A settings landscape may also include hills or mounds where children can climb, crawl up and roll down. There might be a mixture of long and short grass shrubs and bushes to hide in and lie on, build dens or have a picnic or play ball games. Many settings provide for risk rich play. Some settings have climbing trees and some have simple climbing structures, balancing beams and logs. Using these, the children can climb and hang upside down from their knees. These activities stimulate and refine the sense of balance and spatial awareness developing the child's core and upper body strength and refining their postural control and overall motor skills. Some settings have swings, such as tire swings, tractor tire swings, hammocks or log swings, knotted ropes or trapeze bars suspended from strong tree branches. Swinging and spinning with a swing is one of the most beneficial activities to develop and refine the sense of balance, which is crucial for all learning development and particularly enhances concentration. Of course, 
there is a need for a measured approach and practitioners need to ensure that all activities take account of the children's safety in line with their physical development. Regardless of space, in settings where excellent provision is noted, the setting has provided a broad range of natural, loose, versatile, sense-rich and manipulative materials. These may include water, sand, earth, flowers, leaves, seashells, stones, sticks and pine cones. The children can use pots, buckets, shovels, ladles, funnels and sieves to cook with. They can also make magic potions and construct sandcastles featuring moats, roadways and whole quarries. Digging trenches and making rivers with dams are other activities that children love. These activities all encompass early mathematical and scientific experiences. Let us not forget the value of benches and other seating areas where children can either sit in peace and quiet, contemplate, dream, rest or read a book. They are also great for sitting with friends and having a chat. During inspections, inspectors may note that the setting has no outdoor area of its own. These settings may be in the middle of a complex of flats, part of an industrial estate or surrounded by buildings. Sometimes these settings are part of or adjacent to a primary school and thus might have access to the schoolyard or hall. To counter this challenge, settings need to be very creative and flexible. These settings may take regular excursions to nearby greens, gardens, parks, seaside, woodlands or other amenities to enable children to play in nature, explore and be physically active. A setting may have a green fun day where they spend time in the local community garden. Settings may also bring nature inside by having well-resourced sand and water tables, a bucket of seawater and seaweed, and loose, versatile natural materials such as pine cones, conkers and seashells. Inspectors note, for example, that a small windowsill garden is sometimes created, where children grow and mind herbs, flowers and cultivate trees, which are later planted in forests. In addition, why not open up the windows for some fresh air and to hear the birds? Consider hanging bird feeders to attract the birds. Indoor movement and action games can also promote children's physical development and physical fitness. This option can also be considered whether there is or is not immediate outdoor area. Here we will see some photos which demonstrate many possibilities outdoors. The children can use magnifying glasses and measuring tapes to investigate and gain more precise information. They can use a pen and notepad to draw plans or shopping lists. The children can use their initiative and materials like crates, pipes and tires to construct sophisticated creations. It is beneficial to have a painting easel outside where the excess paint can drip into the grass. The children can paint stones, leaves, sticks and flower pots. They can also create murals with seashells. Children can use buckets of water to water the plants or splash around in and they can use a paintbrush to pretend to paint different surfaces. Inspectors often note that children have opportunities for gardening in high quality settings. They prepare the ground, work the soil, make compost, dig, rake, collect stones, sieve earth, plant, weed, water, and finally harvest, cook and eat. The whole cycle of food production is experienced. This fosters respectful engagement with nature, stimulates the senses, and helps with motor development. Remember, the area doesn't have to be big. It needs to be inviting and inspiring. We will now take some moments to consider some passages from inspection reports which highlight excellent practice in effective outdoor learning environments. We will also see some photographs of settings outdoor environments.
Here is a list of further information and resources which may support you. If you have direct queries, comments arising from your engagement with this webinar, please use the dedicated email address provided to send your comments to us on insights underscore info at education.gov.ie. We wish to thank all for the beautiful images shared with us for this webinar. Thank you and goodbye. Thank mm -hmm. you.